Okay, everybody, we'll call the regular city council meeting Monday, December 28th to order. We'll do a roll call vote. Alderman Putoff? Here. Ferrari? Here. Waldorf? Here. Lacocious? Here. Radke? Here. Mueller? Here. Sapienza? Here. Payton? Here. Mayor Harl? Can I get a motion for a temporary chairperson? Nominate Alderman Putoff. Second. Uh, any presentations tonight? Uh, public comment. Bob, you have anything on your mind that we can share with everybody else? <laughs> I've seen it today, by the way. I was by there today. Well, I guess that comes up later in the meeting, but uh, I don't see a lot of confidence that will happen. Uh, do we have a motion to approve the regular meeting minutes of December 14th? So moved, Your Honor. Motion by Alderman Waldorf with a second by... Second. Alderman Payton. All in favor? Aye. Uh, financial reports, treasurer's report, city clerk's report, general fund, report of sales tax, electric financial report, water financial report. Do we, we have a, a motion? motion? We accept them all, all the reports into the record. I'll second that. Motion by Alderman Waldorf, second by Alderman Lacocious. Any comments? Okay, a couple comments we had. You notice that the city sales tax is up about 5.4% for the year. Uh, that continues to be a, a nice number for the city. The uh, city also received about $270,232.29 from the state of Illinois. That's the video gaming tax, the use tax, the 911, and the MFT funds. So those have been received in the amounts of a little over 270000 In addition to receiving that, we also did get a Christmas card from the Rauner family, which I, I know everybody will cherish. Send him my thanks, please. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, committee reports, finance and safety services, Alderman Radke. Yes, Your Honor, first thing in the finance committee is disbursements. <clears throat> Total disbursements for December 30, 2015 are $2,275,624.81. I move that this report be received, placed on file, the bills paid in the usual manner. Second, Your Honor. A motion by Alderman Racky with a second by Alderman Ferrari. Any comments or questions on the disbursements? We have a roll call vote. Alderman Putoff? Aye. Ferrari? Aye. Waldorf? Aye. Lacocious? Aye. Bradkey? Aye. Mueller? Aye. Sapienza? Aye. Payton? Aye. Uh, approve volunteer ambulance services. Alderman Payton? Yes, Your Honor. I have approved uh, volunteer ambulance service activity summary for November 2015. I'd like to make a motion that we accept this report and place it on file. Second, Your Honor. Motion by Alderman Payton. Second by Alderman Ferrari. Any comments? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anything else from the Finance Committee or Public Services? Uh, Alderman Lukosius, please. Uh, yes. I have the Electric Department monthly report for the month of November 2015. And during this period, um, we sold 18,694,904 kilowatt hours, which resulted in charges of $1,777,688.50. I'd like to make a motion that we accept this report and place it on file. A motion by Alderman Lacocious with a second by Alderman Sapienza that the Electric Department monthly financial report be placed on file. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Next, Your Honor, I'd like to make a motion to execute professional services <clears throat> agreement with Shive Hattery for mechanical plumbing, electrical engineering for the public works building in the amount of $43,500. We have a motion from Alderman Waldorf. I'll second, second that. Second from Alderman Lacocious. Um, any comments on that? Uh, yes, sir. The uh, 
the amount and uh, the motion to execute this agreement uh, is for um, design work okay, with the bids for the actual on-site construction work uh, coming later. Eric, do you have any more comments on that? No, that's correct. Uh, I talked with two firms uh, over this work. I remember the first time I presented the public works building and going through the line items that will need to be completed as we move forward. This is one of the line items, uh, the MEP consulting work. What they'll do is they'll look at the HVAC system, the plumbing, the electrical, size everything for what we're requesting, uh, check code compliance, and then give us the line drawings, which we will then develop bid packets and put them out to bid for contractors. Uh, additionally, uh, on this as well, we went through the design review committee uh, a couple weeks ago. We met with them. There were a few comments on the floor plan. Uh, after this is complete, we'll be able to finalize that preliminary floor plan that we had. Thank you. Any other questions, comments? Uh, we have a motion. Can I, can I ask? Sure. How, how far along are they before the weather? Any concrete work done? Uh, quite a bit uh, on the walls, a few hundred feet of wall. Um, I'd say we're probably at the 50% mark on the concrete work. Uh, stopped up there last week. I know they were up there this morning yet in the weather. They weren't pouring concrete, but prepping. Uh, and last week I was there, they had most of the footings completed and about three, 400 foot of wall. Uh, yeah, it's in it's in the contract with them under that bid packet that they have to take all co cold weather precautions while doing that. So heated blankets, et cetera. Mm. Okay, we have a motion from Alderman Waldorf with a second from Alderman Lacocious. We have a roll call vote. Alderman Potoff. Aye. Ferrari. Aye. Waldorf. Aye. Lacocious. Aye. Bradkey. Aye. Mueller. Aye. Sapienza. Aye. And motion approved. Any other Items under public services. Uh, no, sir. Thank you. Clerk Bartley. Peyton says aye. Alderman Peyton. Aye. Who does that a lot? Uh, yeah. Duly noted. I acknowledge your presence here, Tom. Uh, we have some important ordinances tonight, tax abatement ordinances. Attorney Schweiger, do you have those? Uh, just as a uh, brief um, summary of municipal finance and uh, bond finance. There are generally, I mean, there can be tax anticipation warrants, yeah, but there are generally uh, two types of bonds that governmental units uh, issue. One would be revenue bonds, and the other would be general obligation bonds. A revenue bond, uh, by definition, payment would be from the uh, revenues of the system for which the bonds were issued. So if you had strictly a revenue bond issued for a water and sewer project, uh, the revenues from the water and sewer project would be pledged to pay that bond. If there weren't any revenues from that, the bondholders would not get paid. Um, the other type of bond is a general obligation bond, which really pledges the full faith and credit of the municipality. And then of general obligation bonds, you can have what's called an unlimited tax GO, or UTGO, which is unlimited tax general obligation bonds. Those are the most favored type of bonds because if they're not otherwise paid, uh, the bondholder has a tax levy uh, upon all property within the city, and that's a uh, force levy, and that's in the bond ordinance when it's passed. The amortization of that bond is um, direct tax levy um, each year on the uh, property taxes. Uh, this evening, you're going to pass four tax abatement obligations. Those uh, tax abatements total uh, about $1.7 million. And for a $100,000 fair market value home, those abatements would save about $215. So in other words, but for the tax abatements, 
a $100,000 fair market value home in the city would otherwise be taxed an additional $215 for next year's taxes, but you abate those. And um, in the 39 years I've been here, uh, they've, been, they've always been a big Now, why do we um, have general obligations on revenue bonds? Okay, So even if you have what's historically a revenue bond that would pledge the revenues of the system to pay that bond, you pass them as a general obligation bond because those are the most favored. That's what a person that owns a bond wants. He wants an unlimited tax, general obligation, because he knows it's going to be put on They're just a little challenging to operate. Sure is work. Okay, here we go. Uh, so there would be a general tax levy each year to provide for the amortization of those bonds. Well, even if we have a revenue bond that's used for water or sewer project, or we or um, electric uh, bond to use for an improvement to the electric department, we pass a general obligation uh, bond because uh, that's what bondholders want, and because they want it, the interest rate is lower. Even at today's low rates, uh, the difference uh, in interest rates between a revenue bond and a unlimited tax general obligation bond today would be maybe 30 basis points. Now, what is a basis point? One percent. Okay, 1% is 100 basis points. And when you talk about interest rates and that, they always like to talk about basis points, but just think of 1% as 100 basis points. So if you had, say, a 10-year uh, bond issue, uh, it would probably be uh, around 30 basis points uh, cheaper to issue it as a uh, unlimited tax general obligation bond as opposed to a uh, revenue bond. If you went out to longer-term bond, which is normally done for capital infrastructure improvements, that's 20 to 25, 30 years, the difference in cost may be up to 100 basis points difference. And it's not only the difference in the interest rate uh, between those two, but when you go with a straight revenue issue as opposed to a, a, a GO issue, you have a lot of additional bond costs because you provide for what's called sinking funds. So you put money away each year in what's called a sinking fund, so the money will be there for the uh, uh, bondholder. Uh, you're paying uh, normally a big bank some escrow uh, fees and bond costs uh, by a bond console are higher for those bonds than they would just a straight unlimited tax general obligation bond because they have to provide for the escrows and they provide all these additional uh, bond covenants. So what would that mean? Take a typical issue of, say, $2 million. If you could save 100 basis points um, a year on that, that would save you $20,000 just for one year. So that just gives you a general, uh, general summary of the difference between revenue bonds and general obligation bonds. But the city, uh, historically, and I can say certain, with certainty for the past 39 years, has always passed tax abatement ordinances uh, to abate those um, tax levies that would be imposed by the general obligation bonds, but you issue them that way to save yourself a lot of interest expense. So the first ordinance we have is uh, an ordinance abating 2015 tax levy as provided by general obligation bond series 2010, recovery zone economic development bonds direct payment bond ordinance number 4692 duly passed and adopted on February 15, 2010. Uh, this provides for a uh, abatement in the amount of $222,200. Move we adopt the ordinance. Second. Uh, 
motion made by Alderman Rack. He was second by Alderman Ferrari. Do I have a roll call vote, please? Alderman Putoff. Aye. Ferrari. Aye. Waldorf. Aye. Lacocious. Aye. Radke. Aye. Mueller. Aye. Sapienza. Aye. Payton. Aye. Ordinance adopted. Uh, the next ordinance is an ordinance abating 2015 tax levy as provided by three million thirty-five thousand dollar bond ordinance number four six five seven entitled an ordinance authorizing the issuance of ob general obligation bonds series 2009A of the City of Peru, Illinois, duly passed and adopted on October 26, 2009. This provides for an abatement in the amount of three hundred and sixty-eight thousand six hundred and twelve dollars and fifty cents. We have an ordinance. What's your position? I'll make a motion to accept the ordinance as written and read. A motion by me, by Alderman Ferrari was second by Alderman Mueller. A roll call vote. Alderman Putoff? Aye. Ferrari? Aye. Waldorf? Aye. Cochus? Aye. Radke? Aye. Mueller? Aye. Sapienza? Payton? Aye. Next in ordinance. Next order is abating 2015 tax levies as provided by $3,105,000 general obligation re refunding bond series 2011B bond ordinance number 4835 duly passed and adopted September 7, 2011. This provides for an abatement in the amount of $452,400. Your Honor, I'll make a motion that we accept the ordinance as written in red, please. I'll second that. Motion by Alderman Waldorf was second by Alderman Lacocious. Any questions? Roll call vote. Alderman Putoff? Aye. Ferrari? Aye. Waldorf? Aye. Lacocious? Aye. Bradkey? Aye. Mueller? Aye. Sapienza? Payton? Aye. Ordinance adopted. And the last of the abatement ordinances is an ordinance abating 2015 tax levy as provided by bond ordinance number 4585 entitled an ordinance authorizing the issuance of general obligation bond series 2009 of the city of Peru duly passed and adopted on March 16, 2009. This provides for an abatement in the amount of $730,700. What's your pleasure? Your Honor, I'll make a motion that we accept this ordinance as written in red, please. Uh, motion by Alderman Waller, second by Alderman Sapienza. Roll call vote. Alderman Putoff. Aye. Ferrari. Aye. Waldorf. Aye. Lacocious. Aye. Radke. Aye. Mueller. Aye. Sapienza. Aye. Payton. Aye. Uh, next, I have the minutes of joint hearing of Plan Commission and Zoning Board of Appeals on petition of Granville National Bank, trust number 1093. Um, on December 16th, 2015, the Planning Commission and Zoning Board of Appeals of the City of Peru convened for a joint public hearing to consider the petition of Granville National Bank Trust number 1093, seeking a zoning reclassification of the zoning ordinance and approval of a proposed preliminary plat for certain lots in the Peters Thompson Farm Second Edition, um, generally located west of Herbert Street and north of 7th Street in the City of Peru. Um, the petitioner prays for a zoning reclassification for the property from R1 single family residence district to R3 single family and two family residence district. Uh, he prays for the approval of a proposed preliminary plat for lots 6, 15, 20 through 24, and 34 through 38 of the Peters Thompson Farm Second Edition for said purposes. Um, James Giordano the third was sworn. Uh, and appeared on behalf of the petitioner. Um, uh, as I said, the petitioner is a trust, and with the uh, many family members, Cheryl, Dave, Bill, and the two daughters are the beneficiaries of the trust. Um, Mr. Giordano said that he was a resident in the city of Peru and desires to develop a portion of the Peters Thompson subdivision for duplexes and requests that 12 lots be rezoned from R1 single family residence districts to R3 single family and two family residence districts to allow for the construction of the proposed duplexes. The duplexes um, uh, will not change the size or the rezoning reclassification will not change the size of any of the lots as presently platted. Um, no variances will be required. The zoning reclassification would change the side yard setbacks from 15 feet to 6 feet and would also reduce the required front and rear yard setbacks. Um, Mr. Giordano stated he believed there was a need for duplex residences um, for sale to empty nesters and younger couples who are renting but wish to buy. Um, they would be sold separately as uh, two units A and B from each lot. Um, the preliminary plat 
uh, he sought to uh, be approved isn't final. Uh, the proposed covenants, restrictions, and development plans would be submitted with the final plat. Um, Mr. Giordano introduced uh, pictures of the proposed duplexes he desired, desires to construct. They would be two-door style with stone, brick, James Hardy siding to blend in with the neighborhood. Um, they would be approximately 1,350 square feet uh, on each side, up to 2,000 square feet on each side, with the first duplex proposed uh, to be constructed being 1,550 square feet each side, consisting of two bedroom uh, duplex with a den and two car garage. Um, the estimated price range for these duplexes would be 175000 to 212000 um, reclassifying the property will decrease the side yard setbacks from 15 feet to 6 feet, the front yard setbacks from 40 feet to 25 feet, and the rear, rear yard setbacks from 50 feet to 35 feet. Um, there were some uh, objectors present, um, Eric Hege, John Vizzetti, Mark Scolari, Joe Bergoni, uh, Mike Piagini and uh, Denise Scolari were sworn in and uh, voiced their objections. Um, generally, they were um, owners of other properties in the subdivision who had built single-family residences and uh, claimed to have relied on the plat for single-family uh, residences and believed that the duplexes and the reclassification of the properties uh, to allow for duplexes would depreciate the value of the single-family residences uh, in the in the area, and um, uh, objected to the proposal. The uh, zoning board of appeals member Atkinson moved, and member Miller seconded that the petition is prayed uh, for be recommended to the plan commission. Um, be denied. The motion passed unanimous, unanimously, 5A, 0 nay, two members absent. Plan Commission Member Biederstadt moved and Member Lucas seconded that the Plan Commission recommend to the City Council that the petition be denied. The motion also passed unanimously, nine members I, 0 nay, and one member absent. Okay, what's the Council's uh, decision on this? Um, as you, uh, Alderman, uh, a lot of us were at the meeting and heard the uh, heard the uh, complaints from the residents. And as a alderman of that ward, I'd like to uh, make a motion that we accept the minutes of the meeting and adhere to the uh, decision of the uh, planning and zoning. And I second that. A motion by Alderman Lacocious. A motion by Alderman Potoff to concur with the zoning board of appeals decision. Uh, not to move ahead with the property. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any questions? That's it. Next, we have the minutes of the joint hearing of the Plan Commission and Zoning Board of Appeals on petition of SRC Peru LLC. Um, the Plan Commission and Zoning Board of Appeals convened for a joint public hearing on Wednesday, December 16th. Uh, to consider the petition of SCR Peru LLC seeking waivers and approval of the proposed resubdivision of lots located at 1655 38th Street in Peru, Illinois. Um, the petitioner seeks approval of the following waivers from the City of Peru Subdivision Site Development Regulations Ordinance Number uh, 3239. Uh, as follows, A, the requirement for a preliminary plan and subdivision improvement drawings because the same were previously done for the property as a waiver to section 4.01A C4 of the subdivision ordinance. The, B, the plan review and plan review fees pertaining to the construction improvement drawings as a waiver to section 4.01A2A. C, the infrastructure construction inspection fees as a waiver to section 12.01 C, D, the requirement of subdivision improvement security as a waiver to section 12.02, E, the requirement of sidewalks as a waiver to section 11.04 of the subdivision ordinance, F, construction plans review fees and construction inspection fees as waivers to sections 4.012 and section 9.11 respectively of the subdivision ordinance, 
G waiver requirements of the Design Review Committee and H for such other um, further relief as was appropriate. Um, the petitioner further requests approval of the final plot for H Hobby Lobby subdivision to the City of Peru as described on the plot of resubdivision. The property is located within a B2 community shopping district zoning classification. Um, James Quinard of Chamlin and Associates was sworn in and um, stated that the city of Peru desires to realign Venture Drive and the petitioner has cooperated with the city in dedicating the right of way uh, to the city free of charge for the realignment. Uh, Mr. Clenard uh, introduced into evidence a proposed final plot for the Hobby Lobby subdivision which would be a one lot subdivision containing 8.74 acres and would also provide a 0.69 acre dedication of right of way to the city of Peru. Uh, he also introduced into evidence a demolition plan concerning Venture Drive realignment together with the plan of the new intersection detail. Um, there would, he stated that there would be no inf new infrastructure needed for the realignment other than the actual road construction of realigned Venture Drive. Um, the existing entrances at the southeast corner of Hobby Lobby Strip Mall would remain essentially at the same location after the realignment. Um, he stated that the uh, existing venture drive would not be vacated, uh, simply that there would be longer entrances to, into the businesses on the east side, which include Dairy Queen and a couple businesses to the north. Um, the would be a right turn only out of uh, National hometown, hometown National Bank and the traffic pattern at First Federal Saving Bank would remain essentially unchanged. Um, City Engineer Eric Carl stated that it's his recommendation that the requested waivers uh, be approved because all the infrastructure is in place except for the realignment of Venture Drive, uh, which would be a City of Peru project. Uh, there were no objectors present at the hearing. Uh, Member Atkinson moved and Member Wuyak seconded that the Zoning Board of Appeals favor recommend the petition and the final plat to the Plan Commission. Uh, the motion passed unanimously, 5A, 0 and A, two members absent. Plan Commissioner Basali and Member Biederstedt seconded that the requested waivers from the City of Peru Subdivision Ordinance be favorably recommended to the City Council. Motion passed unanimously, 9A, 0 nay, no members absent. And we have the minutes on the realignment of Venture Drive. What's the Council direction? I move that we accept the minutes and concur with their recommendation. We have a motion by Alderman Radke with a second by Alderman Payton to concur with the recommendations. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. So to follow up on that, we have an ordinance granting waivers from the terms of the Subdivision and Site Development Regulations Ordinance number 3239 of the City of Peru sought by the petition of SCR Peru LLC. Uh, we have an ordinance. Uh, what's the direction? I'll make a motion that we accept the ordinance as written and read. I'll that. Motion by Alderman Waldorf, second by Alderman Sapienza. Roll call vote, please. Alderman Putoff. Aye. Ferrari. Aye. Waldorf. Aye. Lacocious. Aye. Radke. Aye. Mueller. Aye. Sapienza. Aye. Payton. Aye. And also to go along with that, we have an ordinance approving and accepting the final plat for Hobby Lobby subdivision to the City of Peru, Illinois. Ordinance for the final plat. I'll make a motion that we accept the ordinance for the final plat. I'll second, John. Motion by Alderman Lacosha, second by Alderman Waldorf. Roll call vote. Alderman Putoff. Aye. Ferrari. Aye. Waldorf. Aye. Lacosha. Aye. Bradkey. Aye. Mueller. Aye. Sapienza. Payton. Aye. Ordinance adopted. Any unfinished business tonight? Just right back to the Hobby Lobby. Do, we, do you have a timeline, Eric, as to when? You'll see construction start and finish? Yep, we're at 90% plans. I'm currently working with a landowner uh, that's taking shape as how it's done. Uh, we have a small portion of right away to get from them. We do have, we did receive sign off from Steak and Shake. They're the tenant. Um, I'm awaiting the landowner. Uh, it's a small portion that we're taking, and a little bit of improvement to the entrance, the south entrance to Steak and Shake, as well as a relocation of their sign. Um, Provided everything goes well this next month, hoping to have it out to bid at the end of February, construction early spring. You have an estimate on it, Eric? Uh, not, not right now. I can uh, provide that with next meeting if you like. 
Uh, Any previously prelim plans we were looking around for four hundred thousand. Any other unfinished business, Jeff? Any new business? Petitions, communications. Yes, we have two communications. The first is from uh, Joseph Stromberg, Stromberger requesting a variance for the property located at 2212 Plum Street. I move that we refer that to the zoning board. I'll second. second. Motion by Alderman Radke, second by Alderman Mueller to refer that to the Zoning Board of Appeals. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Next we have a communication from Rodney Paul Dale and Erica Dale requesting a variance for property located at 1820 Sycamore Street. Council, what's your desire? I'd make a, um, I'd make a motion that we refer this to zoning. Second it, Your Honor. Motion by Alderman Lukosha, second by Alderman Ferrari to refer the communication to the Zoning Board of Appeals. All in favor. Uh, no further communications. Uh, any public comment? Closed session? Uh, I had one other thing before we get any further. I should have said on our new business. I just want to talk a little bit about uh, predicted flood stage. Uh, we're looking at, as of tonight, I printed the latest from the uh, from NOAA, the Hydraulic Prediction Services. It looks like we're going to go to 29 feet, and that will happen on Wednesday afternoon. 29 feet will put us across Water Street right at the curb, basically about right where we were in June. So. Um, Electric uh, department, we they worked all day today. They got the pumps and everything going there, so we don't have any issues down there. It's primarily just in the low areas on Water Street that's probably going to go under. But you'll see that happen. So I just wanted to give you a heads up on that. Thank you. Are we, what was the stage uh, back in 2013 when it reached the fire? Yeah, 32 feet. That's our action level for the wastewater. Treatment plant, east wastewater treatment plant, 32 feet is our action level for that, so we're not going to get close to that. Jeff, did we have any uh, issues today with uh, electrical outages or anything with the ice? No, Amaret had had more problems than we did. Uh, we had yeah, a I know pole. Ameren, Ameren had quite a few problems. Yeah, we had a pole north on 251 at 32nd uh, that was burning that the cross came off and shorted out up against the post, but other than that, in town, as far as I know, we had no electrical outages. Um, since all this rain and that, we had uh, monitors and that up on 28th Street. Are they reading below level or doing good? or? No, what we'll have to do is we go and we pull that data. Uh, one of them, we, if you remember, we put a transmitter pump in the road at Marquette Street that gets transmitted to Gas Voda. So I'll touch base with Al after the rain event and get the data. Anything from the police department? Treasurer's report? Finance officer? Do we have a meeting to a motion to adjourn? So mm -hmm. Motion by Alderman Ferrari, second by Alderman Waldor. Favor? Aye. Aye. Very good show.